Well, good morning. My name is John, and holy cow, are we living through some crazy times. Uh, and here's a question as we all go through this together, is how should a Christian be responding as we go through these incredibly unprecedented times that we go through? Uh, and I, maybe you don't call yourself a Christian yet, maybe you're exploring the idea of Christianity, uh, but if you are a Christian, if you're thinking about becoming a Christian, how should a Christian be responding? Like, especially like emotionally, how, what should our reaction be? Uh, here's a couple options for you. Uh, one, uh, how about anger? Uh, is it okay uh, if you're a Christian to be angry in the midst of these times? Uh, as you look at what's happening to your life, your family, your money, your job, your health, uh, as you look at your friends and what's happening to them, as you look at our neck, is it okay to look at the situation and to be angry, to be mad? If you're a Christian, uh, is that okay? Uh, or how about this? Uh, if, if you're a, a Christian, can, can you get sad? Uh, can you have moments where you just kind of break down because I mean just all this pressure and all these things that are going on and just is it okay just for you just to kind of lose it a little bit uh, and just to, to weep and to cry is, is that okay uh, or how about this uh, is it okay to to be glad uh, is it okay to to be happy is it okay to, to find, you know, as you watch so many other people that are going through such difficult times, or even as you're going through hard times, uh, is it possible uh, and is it okay for us to be happy in the midst of this? Uh, or uh, should our response to be just like, you know, confident? You know, and that, you know, even though that, you know, this is really difficult, you know, and there's so many, you know, new sources in telling us this is going to, you know, should we be believing and trusting that, you know, somehow God can do this, you know, and just, we are just, you know, our, our faith is strong and we are confident in the midst of it. Is that the way that Christians should be acting? Uh, or uh, another option, uh, is it E? Uh, is it all of the above? Uh, or is it even all of those emotions and maybe even more emotions that if you're following Jesus, that it's okay to feel and to act out as we are going through this together? And what I want to talk about today is that I think it's okay for us to feel all of those things. And the reason why I think it's okay for us to feel all those in the midst of a crisis is because those are the feelings, those are the emotions that Jesus felt in the midst of a crisis. Uh, and one of the things that we talk about is uh, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to live our lives according to Jesus. That if you're a Christian, new Christian, been following Christian uh, Jesus for a while, that we are trying to be followers of Jesus. We're trying to be apprentices. We're trying to be disciples of Jesus. So we're regularly trying to say, all right, if Jesus you know, was living in my house with my family, if he had my neighbors, if he had my job, if he was living in the midst of this financial meltdown, if he was uh, living in the midst of this health pandemic, if he was right here, how would he act? How would he respond? How would he talk? How would he treat other people? And the good news is we don't have to guess on how Jesus would act, is that uh, one of the things we have in the Bible is uh, we have these four different books. The Bible is a collection of 66 different books, and four of those books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell us what Jesus did, how he acted in the midst of lots of different circumstances when he was on earth 2,000 years ago. And one of those circumstances was a time that Jesus walked into a really difficult Crisis, a really tough time, and we get to see how Jesus acted and Jesus responded. Uh, so today we are in John chapter 11. If you have a Bible, you can uh, uh, turn there, or phone, or uh, you know, every if you want to follow along. Uh, and if you've been uh, with us for the last few weeks, we've been going through the book of John. So John was an eyewitness of the things that Jesus did, and John was like a lot of us. Uh, he was on a faith journey. Uh, he didn't just like, you know, meet Jesus one day and then flip a switch and he just believed everything automatically. Uh, he met Jesus and thought Jesus was interesting, thought he was curious, uh, and but didn't believe he was the Messiah, didn't believe he was the Son of God, didn't believe he was supernatural, uh, but just believed enough that he was willing to start kind of checking out this whole Jesus thing. And then as John started looking more into Jesus and following Jesus around, he saw Jesus do these things. He heard Jesus do these things. In particular, John says he saw these seven signs. And when he saw these seven signs uh, that we've been talking about the last few weeks, then that each one really made his faith increase. Uh, and that's our hope uh, for all of us, is that as we see more of what Jesus does, as we kind of give Jesus a shot 
to do something in our lives and we believe a little bit more. Uh, so this is John chapter 11, uh, a little bit more background before we get to the story. Uh, so this is at the very end of Jesus' life. Uh, even though if you uh, thumb forward in your Bible, you're, we're only about halfway through the book of John. Uh, but John spends uh, about half of his book on the last week of Jesus' life. And so the last week of Jesus' life is going to start in the next chapter in John chapter 12. Uh, and if you're uh, looking for something to read in your Bible the next couple weeks as we uh, have Easter one week away, uh, it would be a great thing for you to read through the last part of the book of John and read, uh, start today, read in John chapter 11 and read all the way through uh, the end of the book. could be a great thing between uh, now and Easter. Uh, this is kind of right at the end of Jesus' life and Jesus, Jesus uh, knows that. Uh, the setup to the story is that Jesus had a friend named Lazarus and Lazarus got really sick. Uh, we don't know what he got sick from, um, but it was a sick that ended up uh, killing him. He, he, he dies uh, at the beginning of this story and then Jesus finds out about it. Uh, so one of the things that this tension, that this story raises is this tension uh, that is maybe for you is a pretty big question. It's a pretty big doubt for a lot of people is the idea of why is it that good things, that, sorry, that bad things happen to good people? Uh, and that's a really good question, and it's one that the Bible doesn't shy away from because the Bible has lots of really good people in it, and it seems like that bad things often happen to good people. And so that's really not something that the Bible promotes is that if you really just follow God, then you know only good things are going to happen to you because uh, this is a guy that right up at the beginning in verse chapter 3, it says that this was a guy, Lazarus, that was a friend of Jesus, and this was someone that Jesus loved. This was a good guy and something really bad happened to him. He got sick and he died. And so now Jesus is going to walk into this situation. And what is going to be Jesus's reaction walking into this crisis, walking into this uh, tragedy? Uh, and so the first thing uh, that we see of Jesus uh, starts in verse uh, 14. He's talking to his disciples about everything that is going on. And he says this. He says, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad that I was not there. Uh, so Jesus kind of says this kind of odd idea. It's something we talked about last week uh, when Jesus healed the blind man, is that one of the reactions that Jesus has when he's in the midst of a bad situation, this is not good, someone died, and, and, that's, and that's not a good thing. And there's a lot, a lot of sadness behind that. But Jesus is saying, you know what, there's a part of this that I'm kind of glad about. Uh, there's something that good that can come from this. Uh, and that can be a little bit of a hard concept, but I think it's also something that most of us know pretty intuitively. Because I think a lot of us have things in our life, things that we've had to go through that have been really difficult times. Uh, and looking back, I mean, we, we, you know, we're glad we're through it. We wouldn't want to go through it again. We, we hope no one else has to go through what we had to go through. But there's a part of it they, right? You know, even though that was really tough, we're glad that we had to go through it because there were some lessons that were learned, there were some relationships that were forged, maybe there's even some faith in God that was built that we're not sure would have happened if we didn't go through those hard times. And just from so many of you, I have heard when you tell your story about how you started becoming interested in God or how your faith grew, there's often a story in there of a really difficult time because God uses difficult times. And so it's possible to be like, to see, you know, kind of some silver linings and see, hey, there's some lessons that are being learned here. There's some things that are happening that are a good thing. Uh, and here's what Jesus says. He says, but I'm glad so that you may believe. Uh, Jesus says, I think there's something that's gonna happen throughout this whole story that's gonna make you guys believe even more, uh, which is a big deal for them because I mean, they've, they've been following Jesus for three years at this point. They already believed a lot, but Jesus thinks that what's gonna happen through this crisis is gonna be something where their faith is going to grow even more. Uh, and I hope that as we go through this, that there's some things that you can be glad about uh, and that you see your faith grow. Uh, but some of you might go, well, I, I, well, I am, I'm not there. Uh, I, I, I get it. I, I'm sure maybe years from now, decades from now, I might look back and see some lessons. But like right now, like that's just not where I'm at. That's not where I'm feeling. And so does that mean that I'm wrong? Does that mean that it's not okay if, if I'm not like learning all these lessons yet? If I don't feel like my faith is growing? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, because that's not the only way that Jesus responded in this crisis. Uh, it goes on. Uh, verse 17 says, uh, on his arrival, 
Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Uh, Bethany, where Lazarus lived, and we're going to find out that's where his sisters lived too. And so Jesus is walking into this area now. It's uh, four days since Lazarus has died. People are very upset. People are very sad. Uh, Jesus is going to see these sisters that he knows and loves, and they're very upset. That's just kind of the crisis that he's walking into. Uh, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus uh, heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. And this is what Martha said. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Uh, and I, just, I love, in so many of these stories, I, I love the honesty that people have with Jesus. Uh, I mean, she has this idea. This is Martha's sister of Lazarus. So she's someone who believes in Jesus. You know, she believes that Jesus has some sort of supernatural ability. Uh, she might have been around when, she, when Jesus healed some of these other people that were ill. And so she has this thought in her head that if Jesus would have been here, then maybe we could have avoided this whole mess. If Jesus would have been here when my brother first got sick, if Jesus would have been here when, you know, like right before he died, if Jesus would have been here, he could have done something about this, but he didn't. He wasn't here. Uh, translation, uh, Jesus, this whole thing is partially your fault. If you would have been here, you could have done something, but you weren't here. Uh, and I, I hope that as you're going through this, uh, you're praying. And I just encourage you, like, be as honest as you want to with God. Uh, God can handle it. Uh, God doesn't look at the next sentence in this, is it? You know, how dare you talk to me that way, Martha? You know, don't you know who I am? He just kind of takes it because God is okay with uh, our raw uh, emotions in this. Uh, and then Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Uh, and Martha answered, I, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Uh, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this. So this is the second way that we now see Jesus reacting in this. And in this, he's I see, he's really kind of giving uh, Martha so some truth, some encouragement. And in some ways, he's being even a little bit confrontational of saying like, hey, like, you know, don't you like believe, you know, you know, don't you believe that, you know, that I really have power to do this stuff. Uh, and in some ways, uh, Jesus is saying here what you would expect Jesus to say if he was at any funeral. It's what a lot of Christians say at, like, at a lot of funerals. Like, you know, like, oh, it's going to be okay. You know, don't you believe that he's going to be in a better place someday? And, you know, don't you believe that, you know, he's in comfort now and he's in peace? And there's a part of that that really feels great when you're in the midst of a crisis. Because if, if you believe, if you have faith, then, like, that's like truth that we need to hear. We need to be reminded that in the midst of this crisis, that God is still in control. Uh, throughout the book of John, we've looked at the seven signs. Uh, there's a, another seven in the book of John, these uh, seven kind of I am statements, uh, where Jesus makes these huge claims. He claims to be the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I'm going to bring uh, dark, uh, light into darkness. He claims that I am the bread of life, uh, that I have the ability to give you a uh, real contentment that you know even if you don't have enough food even if you don't have uh, your 401k is going away you know even if uh, you see illness even if you lose your job if you just have me i am enough i am the bread of life and this makes all these huge statements and they all are kind of surrounded by this idea of like you know, don't you believe that i am the son of god that i still am in control and there's a part as we're going through this crisis that we need to be reminded of the truth of who God is. We need to be reminded that even as crazy as everything seems, and even though it seems like we, no one has any idea, you know, how long this quarantine is going to go on, and no one has any idea, you know, if we're going to get sick or not, and, you know, are the new mask helping, you know, are we washing our hands enough, you know, there's just so many questions. And so we need to be reminded that even in the midst of this, God is still in control. God is still big. God still loves us. And there's a part when we're in a crisis where how we need to react is we need to be reminded of the truth of who God is and how powerful he is. 
And we need to be able to give that, that truth and that power to other people. Uh, for me, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy uh, worship songs so much, because I feel like there's so many of the songs that we sing that kind of remind me of that idea, because I can just get going like all of us can. I'm just believing my fear and believing my anxiety and you know believing my guilt and believing my shame, and I can start to believe some things that feel true, but uh, I know they're not true. And it's in the midst sometimes of uh, praying and singing some songs where I'm just reminded that, oh yeah, God, you are big, you are strong, you are powerful in the midst of that. Uh, and that's another way that we can handle uh, ourselves as Christians is we can just remind ourselves of the truth of who God is. But again, someone's like, I, again, I, I know that, John, and like, you know, I, I sing the songs and I, you know, and like, I know that God's in control, but like, I just emotionally, I just don't feel that right now. Uh, and maybe that's okay, because that's not the only way that Jesus reacted in this crisis. Uh, so that's the first sister that Jesus met, Martha. And now he's going to talk to the other uh, one. So this is verse 32. It says, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's the exact same sentence that Martha said. So again, it makes me think, this is something that Mary and Martha have been talking about for the last four days, maybe longer. Uh, but like the, since Lazarus died, you know, so while he was sick, I mean, they've just been like, that's been the reoccurring conversation in the house. It's like, man, why isn't Jesus here? Where is Jesus? You know, why hasn't he come yet? If only Jesus was here, you know, man, if Jesus would have been here, he could have done something about this, but he didn't. Again, just raw honesty, uh, and I love it. Uh, and it said, uh, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews had come along with her also weeping. He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Uh, and you can look or you can underline those words if you want. Just deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Uh, and, and what that's getting at, that I'm reading out of the NIV version of the Bible, and the NIV, I think, softens it a little bit. Uh, the message version of the Bible does a, a better job of it, I think. It says that as he's watching all of them cry and just so upset at this situation, it says a deep anger welled up in him. Jesus looked at this woman that he loved and these friends and all these people that, you know, are just going through this crisis, and he's just watching all of it. He just gets mad. Uh, he gets ticked off. And have you ever had a moment like that where you're looking at a situation and it just strikes you as just wrong and it makes you mad? Uh, I remember uh, one of the first times I felt like that, I was a sophomore in high school and I went with my dad to the country of Haiti and uh, the whole country of Haiti is very poor uh, and we were in the capital of Port-au-Prince and, and uh, in the city of Port-au-Prince there's a trash dump uh, and they call it City Soule and uh, lots of poor people all throughout the city um, but there's a whole group of people that live in the trash dump. And so this is like the poorest of the poorest of the poorest of the poor. And I just had never seen anything like that. Uh, I've never seen people that were that, that dirty, that, that hungry, uh, that ill, that just living in such horrible, horrible situation. And as I looked at it, it just, it just made me mad. It made me mad that something like this could exist in our world, that somehow we could have a world where I lived in America with such incredible comfort, and that there was other people that were forced to live in a trash dump and eat trash. It just, it, it made me mad. It made me upset that this is not the way that things were supposed to be. Uh, and if there's a part of you over the last little bit that has seen everything that's going on, and as you see people forced to isolate themselves from each other, as you see people get lonely, as you see people go through just really tough times losing their jobs, as you see uh, people get sick, as you see people die, uh, if there's a part of you that's like, this just is not, this is not the way that things are supposed to be. This can't be the way that God originally wanted our world to work. And you're right, and we should be mad, and Jesus was mad because this was not a part of the original plan. And so if you're feeling a little bit angry, uh, that's okay. Uh, an important point, I think, though, is that as we see Jesus get angry, uh, he doesn't like deflect his anger at anyone else around, though. Uh, so he, he, gets, he gets very angry, but he doesn't then like, then kind of go off on Mary and Martha or go off on the friends or, you know, he doesn't get mad at himself. He's just mad at the situation. Uh, and I think that's something that we have to keep in check sometimes, is that it's okay to be angry, 
but then don't use that anger as a chance to you know kick the dog or you know go off on your friends or uh, just you know get mad uh, at something else. Uh, but keep your anger at the situation, and that's that's a good response. That's a, that's a Jesus response to the situation. Uh, and here's the last one. Uh, uh, Jesus asked, where have you laid him, he asked. And they say, come and see, they replied. And so now they're gonna go to uh, the tomb. And have you ever had one of those moments where I mean, maybe you've had someone who's passed away and the whole thing is just really, really, really difficult. But then you have that moment where you're gonna like go to the wake, you're gonna go to the funeral, and like you've been like processing it all in your head, and you've been processing it in your heart. But then as you like walk into the funeral home, uh, it just things are getting real now. I mean, you're about to like see the casket, you know, you're about to see the body, and it's just like it's all gonna like hit home. And you, for me, like a whole new wave of emotions starts to come over me. Uh, and that's I think what happens to Jesus. They're like walking to the tomb. And here's what it says in verse 35. It says, Jesus wept. And the idea of wept there isn't that Jesus like shed a few tears and then like moved on. It's like that Jesus like lost it for a minute, minutes, you know, 10 minutes. We, we don't know. Uh, but Jesus just kind of like just, you know, ugly cried, you know, on the ground, just, just you know, it, un, you know, controllable for a little while. Just Jesus really had a breakdown over this whole thing. Uh, and again, it's amazing because Jesus is still Jesus in this process. Like, I mean, everything he told Martha is still true. Like, he still knows he's the resurrection of the life. You know, he still knows that heaven is real. Like, he's like not forgetting all that truth. He knows what he's going to do in a few minutes. He knows that he's about to do this amazing miracle. But yet, he feels the pain and the wrongness of the situation. And he sees that it's okay to weep and to cry. And it's okay for you to weep and to cry. Uh, I remember. Uh, years ago now, uh, we were at uh, my grandfather's funeral, and you know, it was so difficult. And we were saying our very last goodbyes at the end of the funeral, and everyone was going by the, the casket. And last to say goodbye was uh, my grandma, and my grandma was at the casket, and uh, she just broke down, just lost it, uh, crying. And there was a minister that was there who I'm sure had good intentions and a good heart. Um, but he just was trying to like move her along, like, you know, oh, you know, patting her on the back, you know, it's okay, don't worry, he's in a better place and let's move on, you know, just trying to like give her, you know, the truth, which, you know, the truth is an appropriate response like we talked about. But like at that moment, I was like, man, just let the woman cry. Like she just lost her husband, you know, she just lost the love of her life. She just lost the father of her kids. Like give her a moment just to like sit in the pain of this. We like, we don't need to like move on to the like, it's all gonna be okay. Let's look at the lessons we're gonna learn from this right now. It's okay just to like take a moment and weep. And if you need some moments to weep and cry, then you should take those in the next little bit. Uh, and then uh, the story goes on and uh, we're actually gonna finish up the story uh, in a couple days. I'll do a, another video that we'll post on Facebook or something uh, where we talk about the end of the story because uh, the Bible is just so interesting because uh, you can read a story uh, one day and it means something to you. you know, God really speaks through it one way and then you read through it you know, a couple other days and it means something kind of completely different to you. The Spirit kind of speaks in a different way. And uh, This is another one of those stories where what I had originally planned to talk about this uh, story uh, months ago, uh, I had to, wanted to focus more on the last part of the story and so we're going to do that in a couple days because I still want to talk to you guys about it. Uh, but then as we were going through all this crisis, it felt like uh, talking about all these emotions was what we needed to talk about. So uh, as you're wading through this crisis uh, by yourself, uh, with your family, uh, with your partner, with your family, uh, with coworkers, you know, uh, however it is that you're having to go through this situation, um, what emotion are you feeling? Uh, are you feeling glad? Uh, are you seeing lessons learned and you're really, you know, kind of uh, getting a little energized off that? Uh, is there truth that you're being reminded of, you know, and your faith is kind of growing because you're like, you, your faith's a little bit moving from your head, your heart. And like I've, I've said, I believe these things, but like now, like, man, I've, I've said, like, I believe that God will take care of me. But now, you know, I'm really being forced to believe that God will take care of me. And, you know, and you're just being reminded of the truth and you are seeing that. Uh, are you angry? Uh, are you having moments of sorrow and weeping? Um, whatever you're feeling, uh, I think it's okay. 
because we see Jesus feeling all of those things. And again, what we see with Jesus is, I mean, he feels all these in the matter of like the same day. He feels all these like in the matter of like a couple hours. Like his emotions are kind of like up and down. And so if you are like that, then you are being like Jesus in the midst of this situation and you are following him. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, we're gonna take communion together. And, and what we remember at communion is that this was a big crisis that Jesus walked through with uh, his friend dying and you know and that can be such a tough thing. But that's not gonna be the biggest crisis that Jesus is gonna walk through. Uh, just a few days after this, he's gonna have all of his friends abandon him and walk away. He's gonna have all the crowds of people that have been starting to follow him are all gonna turn their backs on him and instead ask for his execution. He is going to feel uh, the very spirit of God turn away from him. He's going to feel excruciating pain uh, like none of us have ever felt uh, when he gets put on the cross. And as he goes through those, again, you see all these emotions. There's a part of it as he's going through the pain of the cross where he is glad. Not glad that it's happening to him, but glad for what it is going to produce by giving all of us grace and love and eternity with him. Uh, we see truth, that he knows that even though this is difficult, that God is still in control and that God has a plan of what he is gonna do. And we see anger and we see weeping. And Jesus went through all that and he did it for us. He did it because he loves you. And so today, uh, as we take communion together, I want you to remember that we serve a God uh, who is not just a, a once upon a time in a land far, far away God, but we have a God who went through difficult times and crisis, and he knows. He knows what we're going through, and we can talk to him about it. We can go through it together. Uh, so together, let's take uh, the bread that reminds us of his body. Let's take the, the juice that reminds us of his blood that he shared, shed because he loves us so much. I'm gonna say a prayer and then there's gonna be uh, one last song. So this song's from one of our volunteer worship leaders, uh, Frank and his brother, Zachary, who some of you know their story. They, they've been through some difficult times uh, in their life. Uh, and there's not gonna be words on the screen for these songs, so you can sing along if you know the words or you can just listen to them. Um, but they speak to this idea of a truth of who God is, a God that we can trust in and we can love, uh, that can handle our anger, that can handle our grief, and that can even take difficult situations and can teach us things out of it. Uh, so let me pray. Uh, and then we'll see you guys online and we'll see you guys uh, hopefully someday again in uh, person. So let me pray. Uh, Jesus, we love you. Thank you for choosing, because you didn't have to, but choosing to come to earth, choosing to walk through crisis, and that we get to see how you reacted. And help us to learn from that. Help us to just be a little bit more free and okay in our emotions this week, to, to, to learn lessons, that there's lessons to be learned, uh, to, to find truth where there's truth, and just to believe that you are still big. Uh, to be angry when we need to be angry, because I think that it is, you see these things going on, that, that you're angry uh, and that you are weeping and you are sorrow and that you are with us in all of those emotions. Uh, we love you. Amen.